Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So in this one, I'm going to address one of the biggest concerns people have about the pet niche, which is saturation. I talk to probably half a dozen to a dozen people each week, people interested in starting a dropshipping business, and the question of whether certain niches or what the best niche or what the best products comes up quite frequently. And when we soon get started in discussing different niches, more so the pet niche, it's definitely one of the bigger ones in the dropshipping space. The question crops up and arrives of, does the pet niche work anymore? Is it too saturated to make it work? So today I want to answer that question in the most logical way possible. Take any kind of emotion out of it or any kind of connection because it is a niche that's close to my own heart. It's a niche I've sold in for many, many years. So the idea today is to answer this and take any of my own kind of bias out of the equation um, and back it up with some facts and some data. So let's jump into it then. What is saturation? Before we start, we need to understand, we need to make sure that we're all on the same page and we all know what saturation means. So a quick Google search, market saturation is essentially when the volume of a product or service in a marketplace has been maximized. So basically, this is when absolutely everybody in a particular niche, in a particular space, has seen a particular product and decided whether to buy it or not. When a product has been around for a certain period of time, if everybody has seen it and everybody who wants it has already purchased it and everybody who doesn't want it has already seen it and decided not to buy it, putting that same product in front of somebody, yes, you might catch somebody on a good day who thinks, what the hell, I'm just gonna go ahead and buy it. But if they've already seen it and decided not to buy it, chances are they're not gonna buy it from you either. Okay, cool. So now we know what saturation is. We need to now establish whether a certain niche is saturated and before we can establish that we need to get some idea of how large the particular niche is so here's some numbers for you this is pet ownership in the US you can do your own research it's estimated that 78 million dogs and 86 million cats are owned in the United States this is approximately 44% of all households have a dog and 35% have a cat so that is a outrageously significant amount of pets in the US alone. It's smaller than this, of course, in the UK with about 57% of UK households. So 16 million households have a pet and they have a total of pets of in and around 38 million. So you talk in the average household that does have a pet has more than one as well. And this is also another reason why the pet niche is such a good one as well, because as we can see, the average household has more than one pet, which means when they come on your site, they might buy two of your products. They might buy three of your products, depending on how many pets they have. People who have pets tend to have friends who have pets, who tend to have families who have pets as well. So it's also perfect for the gifted niche too. So that is a significant amount of people. So for it to be truly, truly saturated, you would have to see a significant amount of advertisers selling the same thing as you with millions of views. So do your own research, look at the views other people are getting. And if there is maybe half a dozen, a dozen advertisers selling the same products and they all have in excess of a couple of million views each, then maybe to some degree there would be an argument to be made for some level of saturation. But for this, many people to have all seen your product and decided whether or not to buy it. I'm yet to see that truly happen in the seven years I've been dropshipping with any particular dropshipping product. The other thing you have to keep in mind and consider as well is how healthy is the market? Is it on an upward trend? And then how big is the market? Are people actually spending money on the products or, in, or on the niche that you're planning to go into? So again, quick Google searches and you can find some very valuable information. When it comes to finding the amount that the UK spends on pets, um, I took this one from Statista, which is a known reliable source. What you can see is that there's a consistent upward trend. This is a niche that is growing as time goes on. People, the market is getting bigger. More and more people are adopting dogs. More and more people are then spending more on their dogs. The numbers I found, depending on where you look, everybody says something a bit different. Um, but when I show you the US ones in comparison, and I've found these two here, they're both fairly consistent in saying that the US spends approximately 10 billion pounds a year on their pets. So it's a massive, massive market. If we come down into pet ownership in the US, the US is just a completely different beast. So we can see in 2022, Americans spent $137 billion on their pets, up nearly from 11% from the prior year. So again, not only is this a growing market, the pet niche 
it's a niche in which people are not afraid to spend money. Essentially, dog expenses cost an average of about $1,500 annually. And then to finish off, just to again, just kind of drive home that point, how it is growing. And obviously as a market grows, there's new and new people entering, which we'll cover in a second. Globally, the pet care market has grown from $216 billion in 2020 to $232 billion in 2022, an estimated 6% compounded annual growth. And it's estimated if it continues along the same lines to grow to 350 billion by 2027 so this is a massive massive market so if you are afraid of saturation because there's a couple of people that might have a few hundred thousand views on their ads in reality they're probably just scratching the surface the other thing you have to keep in mind which I touched on in a second is how many new people are entering into the market this is called an evergreen market when somebody new comes into a market there's all these different things that they have to buy the market is not static the people who own dogs now and don't own dogs now are not going to stay that way forever i struggle to find the numbers in the uk but you can kind of guesstimate it based on the fact that in the us approximately four million shelter animals are adopted each year four million so that's potentially four million what it says here two million dogs and two million cats so that's two million dogs that need potentially up to two million because of course there's going to be some people who already own dogs already own cats but even still bringing a new cat or dog into the home they need a bed they need a bowl they need toys there's all these different things that people will need to buy for that cat or dog the key takeaway from this video is that the pet niche will always be a great niche because of the size of it the scope of the different products that sell well throughout the year throughout the different seasons the most important thing though to take away is the individual product i'm a big big believer that you can make pretty much any niche work so long as you pick the right product in that niche just because you pick a certain niche it doesn't matter how good or how easy or how unsaturated a niche is if you pick a crappy product inside that niche your business is going to fail and this is where most people go wrong. They choose the pet niche because they think it's a big one and because they're in the pet niche, they think they can sell any particular dog or cat products and it's gonna go really, really well, but that is not the case. And then when it doesn't go well, they think, oh, the product's just saturated, so it must be the niche, I'm gonna move on to something else. Whereas if they actually picked a better product and they stayed away from generic products that you can find in your local supermarket or pet shop and they actually picked something new and exciting, then they would have a much better chance of making that business successful. The key takeaway is don't be the same as everybody else. I did a video on this a few months ago, um, and it was the, I think I called it the most important question in dropshipping, and the biggest difference between success and failure is how replicatable is your Shopify store? Because if it's replicatable to the point where somebody would experience, like myself, within the space of a few hours can build a Shopify store that looks exactly like yours. I can sell the same products. I've got the same imagery. I've got the same ad creatives. If I can copy your business in the space of three or four hours, how on earth do you expect to succeed? If it was that easy, everybody would be doing it. So the key takeaway here is pick a product that's new, pick a product that's exciting that people won't have seen before, pick a product that isn't easily accessible or available when somebody goes to the local supermarket or pet shop. So for example, we'll take this dog harness. Most dog owners have a dog harness, right? It's a great product in its own right, but why would somebody buy from your shop when they can just pick it up next time they're in the supermarket, probably for a cheaper price and they'll have it there and then they can touch it, feel it, see the quality of it, and they're buying it from a reputable name that they shop in every single week or when they're in the pet shop, when they've got pets at home or somewhere like that. Whereas if you advertise and sell a product like this that they've never ever seen before in any other shop, you will instantly become seen as the one and only place to buy the product if you brand it correctly and well enough. And that is how you win the purchase from people on social media. Perhaps I'll do a video more in depth on that topic as well. So in summary, pretty much any niche works as long as you don't go into something ridiculous like bird watching basketball players. Ultimately, the niche you pick is pretty irrelevant and it actually comes down to the one and individual products. So just make sure you do your research, have a good look around. And then when you do decide to commit to a product, you build a store, you build a brand, you build content and imagery that sets you apart from everybody else and makes your business difficult to compete with. Again, I'm going to do a video specifically on that subject because it's a super important one. So make sure you subscribe 
and look out for that one. That being said, before you go, I have a very special message just for you if you've stayed this long throughout the video. Um, number one, thank you very much. I really do appreciate the support. And number two, if you would like a helping hand in starting your very own profitable dropshipping business, then I want to invite you to book a call in my calendar so we can jump on and Google Meet, meet in person and have a chat. I'm putting this message at the end of the video because I don't want to put it right at the beginning so that every man and the dog sees this message and books at my calendar and it gets full of time wasters. I only want to work with people who are 100% serious about doing this and if you've watched my video all the way through then you probably are quite serious. So what you need to do is, if that sounds good to you of course, head below this video into the video description. You'll see this, it's the mentorship link. If you click that it's going to take you to this page in a second once it loads up. Um, but basically what it is, it's a series of seven or eight questions, a bit of kind of like a gatekeeping process to make sure the only people who do get through are the people who are serious and realistic and passionate about making this work. It's a chance for me to get to know where you are now, where you want to be in one, two or three months time with my help. And if you have a good attitude and a realistic goal that I can help you achieve, it's going to take you through to my calendar where you can book out a slot for me and you to jump on a call and have a chat in more depth. If that sounds good to you, head over there now, book in your time and date, and I look forward to meeting you there. Cheers.